Hello guys, we are running out of time, so I will, I will try to be as fast as possible. Um, we started in 2015, uh, we already established business, and we started with one idea. Uh, I just wanted to have uh, an ability to access to the computational power and to run any applications on remote and cloud computers. Uh, when we developed the first prototype, I have one friend, he came to our development office, and um, there was a feature free game just hit the market and it has ridiculous hardware requirements. Uh, you just need really powerful GPU to run this game and all these GPUs was uh, um, run out of market. Uh, and um, he asked me, uh, what are we doing? I tell him that I'm uh, running a virtual desktop of Windows uh, from AWS on a small Raspberry Pi and he asked me immediately can I install Steam there and can I play this feature free. Uh, I was able to get rid of him from the office after three days. He started to really smell funny and um, that was the reason I just threw out him from the office. Uh, so that was the basic idea. Our project is not about the games but it's particular use case which can be easily demonstrable. So this is how software is moving around the world right now. So in the past, uh, you just have um, uh, floppy disks and you install software via floppy disks. Then um, appeared the companies uh, uh, which were able to distribute their software via web browsers. Uh, then um, uh, the company called Salesforce first uh, made um, software accessible from um, the cloud and um, right now we are moving to the time uh, when we believe uh, that uh, you will don't need to own the computational power, you will have an access to any applications and to anything for just from any device. Um, so we already have 36 paying customers. We're using Amazon Web Services and IBM Software as uh, our infrastructure providers. Um, this is the latency and uh, from uh, what our latency consists of. So you have a remote display in the cloud. We encode the video frame of this remote display in the cloud. Then we transfer it via the network. And this is one of the main issues here because we are not controlling the networks. And for example, the nearest data center with GPUs uh, from the Amsterdam is in the Frankfurt, and the latency to the Frankfurt is 20 milliseconds. Uh, then we decode the frame on the client device, and then we send, uh, for example, the mouse movement, all the controls, uh, back to the uh, Amazon Web Services. So you can see the, uh, your, rea uh, your reactions when you're working with the Windows desktop. And uh, um, that's how the latency look like right now. Uh, so one of the things with our technology, we decode and encode all the video frames in the GPU memory. So we didn't use the RAM and the CPU at all. So that's why we can be so efficient and uh, the uh, encoding and decoding combined, um, uh, we do this in eight milliseconds only. Uh, we use H264 video codec because we have a lot of hardware decoders uh, available on the market and we use them particularly. Um, so, and that's why we start thinking um, how we can improve our service in terms of latency and in terms of user experience. Because, um, and also the cost. Uh, so, right now our consumers can rent uh, our service and basically uh, when we are using infrastructure providers like Amazon Web Services or IBM Software, the infrastructure cost is really, um, it is really cost much. Um, so, uh, it's not affordable for everyone. And um, we start thinking that miners already bought a lot of GPUs and all, a lot of guys mine on GPUs and a lot of GPUs are available. And we start thinking that if we will move to the blockchain, we will uh, let the users rent uh, computers to each other. 
And for instance, instead of renting the uh, computer in the Amazon data center, you will rent the computer from someone in Amsterdam. You will have the network latency around five milliseconds. Uh, you will be able to run much more different applications on this computer um, because you will have improved user experience and you will have dramatically price reduction uh, in that case. Instead of paying uh, $1.50, you will be able to pay something around 20 or 30 cents per hour. For the miner, it will be uh, profitable as well, because if you are mining on GPU right now, I think on the modern GPU you can earn something around 10 cents per hour. Uh, if you will rent your computer to our users, uh, you will be able to earn additional 20 cents, or something like this. So, uh, for the typical use case for our users, they use our service during 10 hours, 22 days, uh, so, in the case of WS and our current service right now, uh, the cost will be around $367. Uh, with the decentralized computing, it will be $66. So, um, much more users will be able to try our service and much more users will be able uh, to become hardware independent. Um, this is the latency and how it look like. Uh, so uh, when you run our servers on local computers, you will have the latency around 8 milliseconds. When we are uh, um, in San Francisco and we are accessing the data center of Amazon in Oregon, you will have the overall latency around 40 milliseconds. Our closest competitor, Paperspace, um, they have 60 milliseconds because they don't do video encoding and uh, um, like we do. And with uh, six decentralized computers, you will be able to have the latency around 13 milliseconds, how we project this. So, uh, also, you can improve your collection and you can improve your latency while you're using our service. If you will switch from 2.4 gigahertz Wi-Fi network to the uh, 5 gigahertz Wi-Fi network, because all our tests shows that 2.4 at around 30, 40 milliseconds to the latency. Uh, definitely the wired connection to your Wi-Fi router will be, um, will be really great, but uh, switching to the five gigahertz will also improve this connection. So right now, uh, our main users and our main market are .NET developers. Uh, with the decentralized blockchain service, we will be able to penetrate even more markets. Um, like designers, gamers, small businesses, and even remote VR. Because for the VR, uh, it's crucial to have the overall latency less than 20 milliseconds. If the latency will be bigger than 20 milliseconds, when you will move your head and the picture will come a little bit slowly, you will feel dizziness. And if the latency below 20 milliseconds, you will not feel dizziness at all. Uh, with our low latency real-time video streaming technology, we even established one company called River, and we make untethered uh, HTC, Vive, um, uh, HTC Vive headsets. Uh, because we have the overall latency for the wireless VR around 18 milliseconds. So if you will rent a computer uh, which, which is able to run the VR experience from your friend, and this friend is in the same town as you, you will be able to run the remote VR. And this will maximize the adoption of the VR everywhere. So we are moving to the world where PC will become just a service and people will be hardware independent. Questions? 10 minutes? <laughs> We are currently in alpha stage and we have around 100 users from different cities who run our SIXA server and who rent their computers to, uh, to other users. So it's just alpha stage now. I think uh, on the beta we will be somewhere in the beginning of the summer and the servers will be up and running at the end of the summer. If supply goes up, it will be uh, it will be it will be a market. But I think it will be definitely cheaper than current infrastructure costs from AWS. Yes. <laughs>
it will be definitely cheaper. And if you are cheaper, it's one of our main selling points because we will have this spread market for this. Last question. How is this uh, legally if someone does some illegal things on this virtually? Right now, uh, if someone is using f uh, this computer for legal activity and Amazon sent us a report that, that for instance, this computer is... Uh, involved in some DNS abuses or something like this, we simply block these users and we delete them. Um, right now, I think that overall, for the whole history of the company, for the three years, we have around 50 users like that. Uh, in that case, we will do the same. If the users will be involved in, in, in such of activity, we will just delete them and that's it. No, it will be decentralized because we, we, you will have a peer-to-peer -peer connection. But we will remove the user from the system. Then you have centralization. If you can remove users, Remove the client. But you still have one central party controlling who's allowed to be a client. Can you repeat the question, Nico? Uh, the question was uh, that we have centralization if we can remove user from the system. Uh, the administration, no, from a legal viewpoint, if someone will use others' computer for the abusement, this user will have the less rating and these users will be able, uh, will, will not be able to rent certain parts of the computers. So if, if uh, we will have a rating system, and if this user will have uh, such a rating that he is involved in some abuses or something like this, he will not be able to rent computers from the certain parts of the users. And the rating system will be on the nodes. And the nodes uh, will have the list of, of computers in their regions, and the nodes uh, will have all the history of um, these computers. For instance, uh, you can turn off turn on your computer only on two hours per day, so you have uh, an uptime, for instance, for 20% of the, the day. And some of the users will have their computers turn off their 100% of the time. And this will be a rating system. So some computers will be expensive, and then others, and some will be cheaper. What's the website? Sixer.io. Okay. Yeah. Thank you very much, uh, Nico. This was really interesting. Thank you.